and welcome to Talking Stocks. I'm Kukule Tukele. Also in studio with me every week are Peter Armitage and Brian Rudd, both from Anchor Capital. Now they are the experts and every week we bring you insightful analysis into listed firms. And our focus this week is Apple Inc., the world's biggest company with a market cap of over 700 billion US dollars. Apple was founded back in 1976 to develop and sell personal computers. Today, the company is the world's second largest information technology company by revenue after Samsung. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, a bit of a fruit salad mix that we have today. Uh, and Apple, maybe if you can give us slightly more background into them, Brian. Uh, who are they exactly? Everyone thinks Steve Jobs. Well, that was the man behind it originally. He came up, came up with the Macintosh computer. If you see it now, you wouldn't even recognize it. Um, and this was a company that carried on for, from computers. Steve left, came back, and basically changed the world through innovation. iPod was first followed by the iPhone, then the iPad. Now we're looking at iCloud. And it's just a company that continues to evolve and to change the world, in essence, um, and grow considerably, as you can see. It is growing, no doubt. And maybe another area that is growing is a revenue stream. If we take a look at uh, a slide that's going to pop up, this has really seen high levels in the mid-2000s. Uh, Very much so. Um, you know, this is a company that's gone from earning a couple of billion dollars a year through to hundreds of billions of dollars a year and forecast to continue growing through. It runs at a fantastic margin in excess of 35% on an EBITDA level. Uh, and we can continue to forecast these numbers to grow, carrying on and going forward. Can all of that be based on the iPhone, which is actually where most of the company's revenue comes from? Yeah, the iPhone dominates it. Um, the most amazing thing over about the business is the margin. Um, ultimately, what they're selling you is, is uh, a phone which lots of people can produce. Mm. Samsung produces a very similar phone. My son always fights with me and tells me his son, Samsung can do more than his Apple. But the fact of the matter is that Apple's making three times as much money when they sell that phone um, than Samsung's making. But that's because they've created the brand, they've created an ecosystem, and it's a desirable product. So it's not just a technology success, it's, a, it's an incredible marketing success. It's an interesting split when you take a look at the revenue by product. The iPhone contributing 55% and the iPad 16%. This is interesting because one would have thought that the iPad would have really uh, started to gain more market share and uh, territory as they were the first to issue some kind of tablet. That's They were first to market with a tablet. However, it's actually one of those that the phone has dominated Apple and will continue to. Um, the growth in the, in the tablet space has actually slowed down across all players. There's been a lot more players coming to that market. There's been a lot more acceptance of other smart devices and other smart tablets. Where on the phone, they've built this brand, this loyalty. Everybody wants it. Everybody needs it. And now they've catered to a bigger market by bringing in the bigger screen. But I, th I think the, the phone is a must have. Yes. Uh, the iPad, if I go on a trip to Cape Town, I've got to take my phone. I'll fly back if I haven't got it. Uh, the iPad you can do without. So it is. There is some novelty value, but it's a, it's a product and what's remarkable is when it got launched is people went, what's that and why would you need it? Mm. Um, but it's taken a certain place in the, in the picking order of technology devices and um, it, uh, you know, I think it'll continue to do well. But it is, it's in a different category to the phone. You know, everybody needs a cell phone, not everybody needs uh, an iPad. And maybe that also goes to show the uh, sales that we've seen with regard to the phone. 43% up uh, from what I understand annually almost. That's it. Over the last five years, they've actually managed to grow iPhone sales at a, a compound average growth rate of about 43%, um, which is just phenomenal. Um, if you actually go and look in these three months to the end of January, they would have sold more iPhones than they did in the whole of 2010, in the 2010 financial year. So it's, it's a desirable product, um, as we've mentioned. And right now with this iPhone 6, they really are in like a super upgrade cycle. The guys who had the four skipped the five, waited for six. Guys who had the five, now it's the big six, it's the thing. So this is really driving sales and I can continue to see that drive all the way into 2015. Just on that, when you look at the Apple product range, it does uh, appear to target the higher LSM groups, uh, conspicuous consumption. A lot of that is driven regarding China as well. The, the sluggish growth that we're seeing out of that region, do macroeconomic conditions matter to a company like Apple? Yeah, absolutely, because it's, it's, it's quite a big uh, price ticket item. Mm -hmm. But at 160 million phone sales, you know, there's six, seven billion people in the world, depending, I'm not sure who actually counts all these people, <laughs> but, um, you know, the actual market share is, is quite small. Uh, but they've got exactly the portion of the market that, that you want. You want the guys right at the top who aren't that price sensitive. 
Um, but obviously, as you grow, you, you're going into more of a price-sensitive bracket. Mm -hmm. And as you say, China becomes a big issue. I think mm -hmm. the, there's enough people, you know, if you take 160 million phones, there's over a billion people in China. You know, if you can sell 10, 20, 30 million in China, that makes a significant difference to, uh, to the overall sales. So, and, and they hadn't really got much penetration in, in China until quite recently. Um, they've done some good deals with uh, the networks there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's becoming a, a snazzy product there that you want to have. Exactly. One that must, uh, an, a hot item that one uh, often wants to have. But uh, is this item one for your portfolio, in particular when we take a look at the market cap and P-E ratio in comparison to its peers, Brian? Well, the company has grown. Um, we can see it. We heard earlier it was a 700 billion US dollar business. Um, but that's, if you the, that's the same size as the JSC, roughly. Yeah? Roughly, yes. Yeah. So that's that, a scary realization. Every single there. company added up. Yeah. That's. I mean, if you look at the, the current exchange, that's just shy of eight trillion rand in one business. It's massive, you know. <laughs> but if you go and look at it from a, an earnings multiple perspective, it's roughly trading in line with its five or six year long average. Mm -hmm. So I still think this company is fairly priced for the growth prospects you're looking at getting through this business. So although. Not the cheapest it's ever been. It's a very, very long way from the most expensive it's ever been from an earnings perspective. So, so the US market's on about a 17 and a half PE. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Apple's on about a 15 and a half. So it's, it's a lower than average price. Um, but obviously the concern is the biggest company in the world. At 350, we were going, it's too big. It's now <laughs> $700 million. Exactly. Um, can it become $1.4 trillion? Uh, possibly, but uh, you know, I think if, if you're looking for something that can be a flyer, it's already done 50% this year. So it is in our portfolios at Anchor Capital. We do own it for our, in our offshore segregated portfolios. Um, but it's, it's, you, you should be able to find something that can grab it faster just because the base is, is so, so big. We've often heard murmurings about tech stocks as well as the high valuations on them. Uh, is this one that one should be concerned about potentially? It's, it's, out, it's outside of the realm of the high valuations. Yeah. You know, the Facebooks and the Twitters and the like um, are, are trading at, uh, you know, Crazy multiples, often they've got small numbers, so you mm. get to 100 multiples. Um, but the, the actual valuation, it's gone past the stage of getting an incredibly high valuation because the earnings are still low and growing fast. It's now a business making huge margins, massive amounts of cash, and, um, and the, the valuation is in fact below the market average. It mm. actually falls more into a value stock category than a high-flying, high-valued share. Exactly, and you mentioned a point there that it is cash generative here. Yes. Very much so. I mean, this is a, a business that in the 2014 financial year had in excess of 50 billion in free cash flow. It has 155 billion US dollars worth of cash on its balance sheet. Um, and that's over and above paying out 57 billion dollars during the 2014 year, returning that to shareholders. So very much a, a, a big cash generator, this business. And no reason why that should cease to exist um, going forward. That, rate of acceleration may slow but you can continue to see that cash piling up so to put that in context their cash flow 500 billion, uh, 50 uh, billion dollars um, is roughly half of south africa's tax revenues repeat that again so it's okay. roughly half of south africa's tax revenues you know it, it, it's an enormous cash generator 50 billion dollars i think that's Apple 500 to buy billion africa. rand they could buy south africa exactly yeah. But just Make on a few you changes, it could be a good investment. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, we'll be, probably become the headquarters of all things Apple. But you did mention uh, the dividend payout here and uh, returning cash to shareholders. That has uh, taken a bit of a dip in recent years. It's, it's the one thing, if you actually look at the, the chart that's on the screen, the, the line indicates the number of shares in issue. So Apple has started returning cash to their shareholders via a dividend and, more, and also via a, a share buyback. So if you get the earnings and there's less shares in issue, the earnings per share goes up. So it's on a, currently on a dividend deal of about 1.8 um, and looking to about roughly a 2% going forward. But they are buying back shares at a, a dramatic rate. They've bought back 200 billion in recent months and will look to do that on a regular basis. So you're looking, roughly looking at this company buying back 5% of its share capital every single year. Mm. So that puts in 5% growth into this business every single year. So, so to put that in context, they've got roughly half of their market capital, uh, sorry, 20% of their market capitalization in cash. So when you're looking at the value, that's sitting in cash, and they're adding another $50 billion to that every year. That's a phenomenal story, but what does this tell us about the management team involved there? The likes of Tim Cook, you think of Steve Wozniak, who was part of the uh, founding team there? 
I think this is a business that has been led from the front. Um, if we look at Steve Jobs, Tim Cook has taken over and, and really gone and established himself as the, manager, uh, as the CEO of this business. But I think he's got a good team around him. Um, I don't think this is a one man anymore. I think this is a team effort. They've brought in some good people. Um, they brought in, I think it was the marketing director from Burberry to, to run as the brand or brand manager for this business because it is a brand and a luxury brand. So I think this is more of a team exercise now as opposed to a one-man show, but it is a, an excellent quality management structure. Judging by what you're saying, it almost seems as though it is a quality company and that brings us to the all-important question that we go to our experts now. Uh, buy, hold, sell on the stock. Let's find out what their recommendations are. <laughs> Well, if you can answer that all-important question for us, buy, hold, sell? So it's a buy. If I was leaving Earth for five years, I wouldn't buy it because these things, you know, technology can change. Um, but it's cheap, still growing, good momentum, and uh, a good solid stock to have in a portfolio. Brian, clearly you agree with the sentiments here. Absolutely. Just on that, the share price, where is it trading? Uh, uh, how much does it cost an investor to actually buy one share at least? It's uh, trading at the moment just under $120. Uh, it's roughly 1,300 Rand for a share. Almost on par with the Nasdaq share price and maybe exposure and, and access to this kind of a stock. How do South African investors get their hands on it? Uh, this is one that most of your brokers should be able to access um, via their brokerage or an offshore account should they have it. Um, and it does also trade via the futures on the IDX in South Africa. So it is available to local shareholders in rands as well. Maybe if we move to the all important question, you did touch on growth. What next for Apple? You can contribute so many phones and so many iPads, but clearly innovation needs to be involved here, Peter. Sure. I mean, that's something that um, people were, have been asking for the last five years and they continually can come up with the next thing. Um, so there's, you know, there's the cloud, there's, there's the iWatch, there's, um, there's the, the, app store the, the whole well. the app store and the, the whole kind of TV experience. Um, you know, Brian can talk through some more of the specifics, but I think the the key thing is they're probably going to come up with something that we're not expecting. Mm. You know, and that's at a 15 p multiple. That's where you can get some value. Shares move on unexpected things, not necessarily on expected things. Yes. But uh, your view, you've got some views on this. What's the uh, Apple? Every time that somebody's gone, where they, what do they do next? What mm. are they? they come out with the next product. Um, the next big rollout product as such is the iWatch. Um, it's expected to sell roughly 50 million units in its first year, which is greater than fossil watch sells in a long time. <laughs> so sure. it's, it really is a big number that they're coming out with. But again, they're also tacking onto this. So you mentioned the, the App Store. Services is growing quite aggressively in their book. They've also now looking at the Apple Pay, mm -hmm. where they've teamed up with some of the, the providers to actually go and pay using your phone. They're talking to the car manufacturers about bringing Apple to your car. Mm. So th there's constantly innovation in this business. And at the rate they're going, I wouldn't be surprised if there's the next big wonder coming soon. So great potential, no doubt. They say they always create things that we never knew we needed. Well, that's where we have to leave it for this week. But do catch us again next time where we talk more stocks. <laughs>